Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in to this week's podcast. So for the next couple of weeks, I want to do a series related to starting new routines and new habits and why they haven't worked for you in the past. I know for me, especially when it comes to cleaning routines, and now I'm dealing with this with my health, I feel like I have attempted and tried so many different things. And then after a while, it gets to a point where you're just like, well, what's the point? Like, I've been here before, I've done this before, and every time I try, I fail. And why is this time gonna be any different? And so if that's how you find yourself feeling, I want to have some topics and propose some suggestions that will give you better outcomes especially when it comes to building systems and routines around your life to help things flow a little more functionally. So if that sounds like something that, you know, you think could help you on your journey, give you some new perspective and a different way to look at it, then you definitely want to stay tuned. So one of the biggest things that I realized as I was starting my homekeeping journey, that was a huge hiccup for me was not adjusting whenever I ran into problems with my system. Typically, I would take this attitude that if it wasn't working, then it was a reflection of my discipline and it was a reflection of some type of flaw in myself. And I would take it very personally and I didn't really try to tweak the system. I didn't really try to find ways to make it better. After doing the reading that I've been doing and also from my own experience, I realized that, yeah, that might be a part of it, but there's a bigger chance that the problem is not necessarily with you. It might just be the way that you designed your habit. You have not designed it in a way that matches your needs, your levels, kind of where you are with your habit formation process and you know you just need to think about how to design it to work around who you are and you know what's important to you. Sometimes we adopt these systems into our lives and we think that it's just like this pre-packaged thing that should work perfectly for us but let me tell you one thing. I guarantee you that the creator of whatever system or method that you're trying to follow does not have the same exact lifestyle as you. They don't have to think about the same considerations as you. I don't think that it's even possible for one person, one creator of a system, to be able to think about all the different variations that might come up in different people's lives to think about all the scenarios and situations that, you know, you specifically would have to plan for. So I feel like instead of looking at these systems that you're learning about and these habits and routines that you're learning about as this pre-packaged one size fits all solution, I encourage you to think about it as more like this is the building stones is that even a thing building stones this is the framework this is like the meat and potatoes this is the foundation but in order for me to you know enhance it and make it customized and fit for me I think that we should go into it already knowing that that is part of the process I'm gonna have to make this work for me and I don't think that I really took that into consideration with some of my early attempts at establishing systems and routines in my house. I would see someone being successful and their home looked put together. So I was like, oh, they must know the one size fits all magical solution. I would go, I would jot down, you know, what I saw or what I heard their recommendations were, and then I would try it. And then after a couple of days, I would just be burnt out and just feeling like extremely stretched and you know and then feeling like oh I can't keep up with it therefore it's a discipline issue you know I never really took into consideration that 
you know, habits are something that you build and strengthen over time. And so maybe they've been strengthening these habits ever since they were three years old. And so they've had, you know, multiple decades to like strengthen and get better with these habits so that when they show up to do their cleaning and stuff, yes, they can clean for eight hours straight because they've been conditioned to do so. Meanwhile, I'm just starting out with my journey. I'm just starting out, you know, putting systems and structures in place. And me just trying to stick with this for a couple hours, like I'm feeling depleted and I'm feeling overwhelmed. And it makes sense. Just think about people going to the gym. You know, if you went to the gym and you saw this bodybuilder that's been going at this thing for decades, you know, don't you dare knowing it's your first day try to go in there and lift up the same weights as that person does that mean that you would never get there absolutely not but it will take a process of consistency of showing up of learning the techniques of you know putting in the repetition and building in the building up the endurance and the strength to do that so I feel like it's the same with you know your habits whether it's home keeping habits healthy eating habits it takes time and you have to know and be honest with yourself and know where you are so that you can start at the right level and build yourself up. And so um, that's what I feel like was one of the biggest takeaways that I got is I cannot assume that just because it works for someone else that it's going to work exactly the same way for me without modification and adjustment. Another thing that I have come to realize when it comes to adjusting your systems to make it work for you is not only should we be adjusting them to fit our lifestyle but there are other things that we could be doing in terms of improving the habit design and for me one of those things that I've learned is trying to make tasks even easier to do before I really got in my systems, I used to have a lot of hurdles in place that would make it hard for me to show up. For example, if I wanted to clean the toilet, I only had one toilet bowl cleaner in the house. It was in my laundry room. So if I was upstairs, I saw a big mess and I wanted to handle it, it would require me to stop what I was doing, go all the way downstairs, get the cleaner, come upstairs and then do what I need to do. And one way that I improved the design of that habit is through tweaking my environment. And so now, right there next to the toilet, I have what I need to be able to fix a problem when I see it. For a long time, I used to do this um, the toilet bowl. Like, you know how they have the toilet bowl wands where it comes like in a fully covered bowl? I used to pour disinfectant into that bowl and then pull out my wand, swish it, swipe it, and put it back in. And that was really effective for me because it eliminated so many barriers, so many obstacles, so many excuses. And I found other ways to do that. For example, if I need to clean a sink, one way that I improved that habit was by adopting the soap is soap is soap rule from the fly lady. So if I walk into my boys' bathroom and I see that their sink is gross, I have a scrub daddy and some hand soap sitting right there at all times. So not only can I handle it, but so can my boys. They can just pop a couple of pumps of soap on that, scrub it up and move on. Before I have had this whole, you know, complex system. I have to go downstairs, go into the laundry room, get the spray, get the rag. And of course, nobody wants to do that. That's why I was out of control. It's because I made it too complicated okay another thing that helps me improve habit design was habit stacking i've told you guys this story probably a hundred times at this point but laundry was one of those things that gave me the most difficulty when it came to just motivation to show up so i used a habit stacking technique that really helped improve the design of that habit and what I used to tell myself is that, you know, in order for you to start dinner and start getting your family and stuff in the bath, you need to fold this laundry. Now keep in mind, I work with very small loads of laundry, okay? Um, I'm, I, they're called like mini loads, okay? I try to keep it small. So this only took me between five, if that, five to 10 minutes, if that, to fold. And so it wasn't like detrimental to my night my kids didn't go to bed any later than normal because I folded that load of laundry. It just put me in a situation where, you know, you have to do it before you do this thing that you really want to do, which is basically get your kids to bed. 
one of my friends and also former students from the Peaceful Homekeeping Academy actually was doing a research on another system and they have an approach to um, habit stacking that I think I even like more. For me, I paired my uh, routine. I put my new habit of folding laundry in front of an existing habit. And so I said before I moved into that existing habit, which is cooking and getting the kids ready, I needed to do this new habit. Well, my friend said that for this new system that she's looking into, they pair habits that you hate doing with habits that you love. So if you love your morning cup of coffee, maybe while that coffee's brewing, that would be a time to fold your laundry. And then that would, then you can pair it with a reward or something that's satisfying. So I think the opportunities are immense when it comes to improving the design of your habits, um, you know, and just finding ways to make it more realistic and easier for you to perform. Um, oh, something else that I forgot to mention of is just even like timing. One thing that used to be really difficult for me before I started my system is finding the motivation to kind of do that last final cleanup session at night. I remember after I would spend all these hours cooking, trying to get the kids ready and just, I don't know, just the craziness and busyness of the day. Once I finally got the kids down, I would go and look at that kitchen and it would be like crazy and overwhelming. And I would just be like, no, I can't do this, you know? And so a way to improve that habit for me is learning how to get those dishes done before the kids go to bed. And so if you guys followed my Vlogmas series, you may have heard where I was trying to adopt this new habit, which is, okay, before the kids go to bed, I'm gonna make sure that at least the dishes are done. So that looks like me working on the dishes sometimes while the kids are eating or if the kids are done eating and they're just kind of having some evening bonding and playing time. That's a great opportunity for me to step in and knock that out so that when I go to bed, you know, now when I come back out, there's only a little bit left for me to do. And I'm not asking myself to do something extremely challenging when I have no energy left for the day. Another way that I tried to use this whole principle of improving the timing was, you know, I mentioned that I tried to do the laundry at night right before I did dinner, but there have been times where I've experimented with doing the laundry first thing in the morning when I have my fresh and best energy for the day. And that was something that was successful for me and also some of the moms who did my program. You know, they just found that they just had more energy to handle more in the morning than they could in the evening, okay? One last thing that I wanted to talk about in terms of how to improve the design of your habits so that they will actually stick is it, playing with timers, encouraging yourself to place time limits on tasks that are normally exhausting for you or that you normally avoid. Sometimes I feel like we try to embrace these habits that take too much time or that feel too complex and a simple way to simplify it and increase the chance that you'll show up is to give yourself a time limit. You know, with a weekly home blessing, we do these tasks that could typically take hours and 10 minutes. You know, do the best you can for 10 minutes. And then when you have time, when you have capacity, when you have motivation, then you go ahead and do all the detailed work that takes you hours. But don't be waiting for that motivation because then you're not going to be handling these things frequently enough. And that's how we get to the buildup. So if you give yourself the ability to have two habits, one where I'm feeling my best, I'm feeling motivated, I can get all the things done. And then the other habit for, okay, you know, I, I really want to be consistent. I really want to make sure this is taken care of regularly. So let me also have my habit where I can just do it in a shortened time frame and also scale back on the complexity. And so it just gives you the best of both worlds. And so that's also been very successful for me when it comes to designing habits that I can actually stick with. So one thing that I encourage you guys to do is think about the routines that you're trying to adopt. Think about the habits that you're trying to adopt and asking yourself, you know, especially if it's challenging, how can I make this easier? That is the big question. You don't even have to remember the strategies. Just ask yourself and be honest with yourself. Like I'm having a really hard time with this. What can I do and how can I make this easier? If you're struggling with laundry, that's my example, 
how can I make this easier? Maybe I can work in smaller loads. Maybe I can pre-sort the laundry and have everyone's basket separated in advance so I don't have to be confronted with this big pile of dirty clothes before I can even throw in my first load, you know? Maybe I need a, a rolling laundry basket. Maybe I do this at a different part of the day. Just keep asking yourself, how can I make this easier and list out ideas and implement one? If you're having a hard time with your morning routine, how can I make this easier? Maybe you need entertainment. You need something to pair with that routine to make it more fun. For me, I love podcasts. I love audiobooks. I love music. So what can I do to make this more engaging? How can I make this less? I know not everyone agrees with paper plates, but that's just the season that I'm in right now because it does make it easier. It's less dishes for me to do. How can I make this easier? Maybe there's tools. I know that I was in love with my little scrub brush that has the soap that dispenses out of it. Um, one of my friends told me about one that doesn't leak after a while. And that was my one of the tools that really helped me strengthen my dish habit because I hated, you know, reaching for the soap. I don't know why, but that was just like little things that you can do to improve the habit to make it more likely for you to show up, okay? You hate um, cleaning surfaces. Okay, how? Can, what can I do to make this easier? One thing that I did was I found ways to prevent mess to begin with. You guys know that my children do not have access to more toys than they can pick up in a reasonable amount of time. And it's very intentional because I got tired of picking it up. So is, are there ways that you can separate some of the toys that are more difficult to clean out of the regular toy box? Put those toys up high. And then when your kids want to play with puzzles or they want to play with games, tell them everything else needs to be picked up. We'll pull the puzzle down. And then when you're done with the puzzle, we'll put it back up. And then you have free reign over these other toys that aren't put up, you know? So just really thinking about how can I make this easier? So if there's one takeaway that I want you guys to get from this episode is stop assuming that the problem is with you and you alone and start assuming that it's more of the system and it has not been customized to remove enough obstacles for you or to make this easier for you yet. And so that is your job is to think about what do I need? How can I set this up in a way that will make this feel easier and more doable for me? So that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll continue this series next week, just really thinking about how to adjust our habits and our routines so that we'll actually stick with them. And um, just really getting over that mentality that, you know, it's because of me, it's because I'm a failure. You know, I think that that's a mentality that I recognize that I struggle with myself, but through my experience with literally changing my whole habit situation with my homekeeping, I know that it's not true. And I know that there are things that we can be doing to bring our habits down to our level. And then once we know where we are, we can then begin to grow. So I'm going to talk about how I think we can go about doing that. So if you're interested in that type of content, then please make sure that you subscribe and that you like this video. That's an awesome way to support the channel. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye.